as we sing out this song, Revival to the Lord. Here we go. Let's sing it out, Revival. And revive us, O Lord, revive us, O Lord, by your power and your grace. Revive us, O Lord, revive us, O Lord, the Holy Spirit feel this. Oh, revive us, O Lord, and revive us, O Lord. tonight as we sing it out revival so lord lift up your voice and revive us so lord revive us so lord by your power and your grace revive us so lord revive us so lord holy spirit fill this place we need a holy ghost revival we need a Holy Ghost revival. Nothing else will do. Nothing but your spirit, Lord. Can our hearts renew? As we turn to you, seek your holy face. Pour out your spirit. Let's sing it out. Give God the glory. Sing it out. And give God. tonight let's keep our hands clapping as we sing out this song only a God like you come on let's sing it out for the praises of man for the praises of man I will never ever stand for the kingdoms of this world I'll never give my heart away shall never bring my allegiance and devotion, my heart's desire and devotion. I'm going to serve the man who died upon that tree. Only a God like you, only a God like you. 
only a God like you Could be worthy of my friends All my hope and faith Only the King of all kings Do I bow my knee and pray Each and every day Only a God like you To you only when I sing Give my everything To only my baby My Father, my Savior Redeemer, restorer Rebuilder, rewarder To only a God like you I give my praise. Oh, come on, church. Let's sing it again for the praises of men. Here we go. For the praises of men, I will never, ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world, I'll never give my heart away. Shout their praise, my allegiance and devotion, my heart's desire and Go to serve the man who died upon that tree. Only a God, only a God like you. Gonna be worthy of my praise, all my hope and faith. Only the King of all kings. Do I bow my knee and pray each and every day? Only a God like you. To you only when I sing, give my everything. Only my baby, my father, my savior, redeemer, restorer, rebuilder, rewarder, to only a God like you, I give my praise. Oh, lift your voice and see that only a God like you. Here we go. Oh, only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God like you. Only a God like you, only a God like you. Only a God like you. Oh, to only a God like, only a God like you, only a God like you, only, oh, to only my maker, to only my maker, my father, my savior, we keep being on the store, we do the reporter, to only a God like you, and I give my praise, oh, I will give my praise, come on, so I give my praise. One more time, will I give my praise? Will I give my praise? Oh, hallelujah. Give him praise tonight, church. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in that attitude of worship and seeing out our God saves in the name of the Father. Here we go. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit. Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hallelujah. Let's sing it again in the name of the Father. Here we go. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name. Oh, hear the joyful sound And hear the joyful sound Of our offering As you saints bow down As you We will rise We will rise with you If we are going And the world will see that In God God say In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name. Come on, sing it out. Call on our Savior. Oh, hear the joyful sound, and hear the joyful sound of our offering. As you saints bow down, as you, oh, we will rise, we will rise. Lifted on your wings, and the world will see. Oh, and the world will see, and the world will see that our God saves. Our God saves. There is hope in your name. As morning stirs, to songs of praise, our God saves, 
seat out. Our God saves. And our God saves. Our God saves. And our God saves. Our God saves. Our God saves. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Let's lift our hands tonight. We're going to slow it down, attitude of worship. We're going to sing on that song, Sumit Hemen. Consado del Camino. Here we go. Consado del Camino. Sediento de ti. Desierto tu sal. Oh, luché como, luché como soldado, y a veces Come on, lift your voice. Our hands lifted up. We need to surrender our hearts tonight. Let God have his way tonight in our service as we sing this song, King of Glory. Yes, the world. Let's sing it out. Here we go. Yes, the world will bow down and say, I will be with the King of glory. Feel this place. I just 
sing so I'll sing hallelujah to you come again I'll dance and I'll dance in the presence to you come again so I'll sing so I'll sing hallelujah to you I'll dance in your presence till you come on. Oh, come on, lift your voice and sing it again. I'll sing a hallelujah. And I'll sing hallelujah till you come on. Yeah. I will dance in your presence. Oh. oh, congregation, lift up your voice again one more time. I'll sing. I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. I will dance, I will dance, dance in your presence till you come again. King of glory, yeah. King of glory, fill this place. I just want. Be with you, King of Glory, King of Glory. In this place, I just wanna be with you. I just wanna be. Oh, come on, church, lift your voice one more time, King of Glory. just want to be with you. One more time, King of Glory. King of Glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Oh, come on, church. Let them know you love them tonight. to be with him amen but he wants to be with us amen he is here in this place in our midst 
We want to open up in prayer, amen, and supplication. We have certain needs tonight that we want to lift up in prayer, uh, specifically for healing, for Ryan Lopez, uh, for healing upon his body. We want to pray for Linda Espinosa, for healing and salvation, and just one special need for the Baldazo family, who had a loss in their family. So please pray for them, that God's grace would be with them, amen, throughout this time of their loss. We also want to pray uh, for this upcoming conference that is already here. Amen. You can feel the anticipation. So we want to pray that God would just bless our conference. Amen. That God would overshadow our pioneers and our missionaries as they make their way. That there would be no delays, nothing like that, no sicknesses. That God's grace would simply be with them, church. So let's continue to pray. Always pray for our fellowship, for Pastor Greg, Pastor Paul Stevens, uh, Pastor Ruby, and our pastor as well, that God's grace would be upon our service tonight, church. And as we lift up in prayer, our brother Eric is going to come to the mic and open us up in prayer, church. Heavenly Father, we so thank you tonight for your grace, God. We come before you tonight with every need and supplication, God, asking, God, that you would be with your people, Father. We pray for those that are sick in body, God. We pray, God, for those that are broken in their hearts, God, that you would bring, Father God, healing upon them, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I'm believing in tonight's service. The gospel have our way, have its way with our heart, God, with our mind, with our spirit, Lord Jesus. I pray tonight be a night, God, of healing, oh, a breakthrough, God, of deliverance. I'm believing, Lord Jesus, oh, the spirit of the Holy Ghost make itself manifest with our hearts, that it deal with the issues deep in our lives, God. I pray at this altar tonight there be severance, God. Oh, there be, Lord Jesus, an abundance of life, Lord Jesus, life lives be left this place Lord an abundance of life fruitfulness Lord Jesus upon our service I pray we break God all oh, the yokes God the bondage of hell make yourself evident in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you. amen God bless you church Glory to God. I forgot we're not doing those video announcements. Give the Lord another clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to welcome everyone to this midweek service. Amen. And so I do want to show the video um, for conference, the enlarging video that the media team put together one more time. Amen. Hello, friends and family. I'm Elisha Antimoni. Thrilled to extend an invitation to the third annual McAllen International Bible Conference, centered around the theme of enlarging. Join us from April 22nd to the 26th at the Door Church, McAllen. Conference is more than a gathering. It's where we get to realign our hearts with God's will and respond to what he's calling us to do. This year, we have an incredible lineup of guest preachers, including Pastor Roman, Pastor Richard Ruby, and Pastor Greg Mitchell, who are sure to bring powerful messages that will not only inspire, but challenge us to step into God's greater call. Most excitingly, we'll witness the launch of new missions and church plants. Every year, couples are announced to start a new church in cities across the U.S. and internationally. This is our heart, to make disciples, plant churches, and reach the lost, one soul at a time. The McAllen International Bible Conference is where you see it all come to life. Whether you're a pastor or a new member of our church, conference is open to all. It's an opportunity to be encouraged and inspired to see firsthand what God is doing in cities and churches around the globe. Mark your calendars, April 22nd to the 26th, the Door Church McCallum. Follow us on social media or visit our website to download the full conference schedule. Let's truly see what enlarging means for each of us. We can't wait to see you there and make history together at the third annual McCallum International Bible Conference. Amen. Hello, Amen. friends and family. Glory to God. Can you believe it's barely been a year that we launched uh, into Africa, Cambodia, um, the Philippines? I mean, it's absolutely, yeah, here we are again. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, and so we'll be doing it all again next week. We will start the week off with uh, Pastor Brandon Flores um, in Sunday a.m. service. And then in the evening service will be 
Pastor Gabriel Flores, amen, from Detroit. And so we are going to start off. These men are going to set the tone for our conference. Remember, there's nothing Friday or Saturday. We are getting things ready here, preparing everything, amen, for uh, the crowds, amen, that we are anticipating. And so if you can help in any way uh, and you want to make yourself available, get with one of the staff members and they will let you know where help is needed. I do want to just go over one last time um, the kind of the rules here for the McAllen Church. Um, if you can remember that parking is going to be done differently this year. We're going to have a lot of signs outside. Adan Molina is now in charge of all event parking. And so uh, please follow the, the signs, follow the uh, instructions that these men are going to be giving you. You know, just I know there's going to be all kinds of different uh, ways to come into the conference. We're trying to narrow it down so that we can control the crowds and be able to get in and out of here safely. So please, if you normally park somewhere, they ask you to park somewhere else, uh, please make sure to obey the parking lot attendants and then we can all have a great, great time. We do not want people hanging around in the hallways. We want you to be in here uh, getting ministered to. We have great preachers during the day, in the evening. Um, and so please be mindful of that. We don't want anyone in the staff area. You see we put a little nice fancy sign there, staff only. And so that staff area is only for staff, those that work on that side. Uh, the restroom there is off limits. It should always be off limits year round. It's not for nursery workers or nursery leaders or anything like that. It's only for staff. So if you can help us with that. Um, also, we don't want people standing in the back. I'm trying to minimize uh, the all the people that stand in the back. It's a, It's kind of... Uh, you know, it gets kind of cluttered up there. And so if you can help us with that, if you are not ushering that day, if you are not part of the security, then we would ask that you please sit down. Sit down with your wife, amen, and your family and enjoy the conference. The seats on the top are for those that are physically challenged and for our elders. And so we have that designated uh, for just that. Okay, and then... Uh, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see everyone, amen, that, uh, you know, we already have the Lopez's here all the way from Bolivia, glory to God. They are going to start arriving, like Pastor William said, pray for their safe travels, pray that their luggage get here, and uh, they get here safely without any complications. Okay, let's go ahead and receive the evening's offering. The ushers should have already been up here, amen. Glory to God. And uh, let's bow our heads. Let's be faithful with everything that God has for us. He is going to challenge us next week. Let's get ready for that. Pray God help me to have a generous heart. Amen. Uh, if I can have Brother Diego bless the offering. Amen. God bless you, church. Hallelujah. As we give tonight, let's sing on that song. Yes, I believe. There is nothing that I need. There is nothing that I need that he won't supply. There is nothing that I need that he won't provide. If I believe. If I believe. There is nothing that I need that he won't supply. There is nothing that I need, that He won't provide if I believe, if I believe. So I said to the mountain, it moved. I said to the mountain, get out of my way. I said to the mountain, it moved. I said to the mountain, get out of my way, because I believe. Yes, I believe. There is nothing that I need that I don't supply. There is nothing that I need that He won't provide if I believe. If I believe. There is nothing that I need that He won't supply. There is nothing that I need 
that he won't provide if I believe, if I believe. Give him praise, church. Thank you for that. Amen. First Kings chapter 10. Last year, um, I ministered on the, um, the Wednesday before conference on the assaults and the things that we have to get through. Uh, today, uh, I want to preach um, a sermon that I've entitled Hiding the Goods, Hiding the Goods, 1 Kings chapter 10, 1 through 13. Thomas Merton uh, comments that good people are usually hidden. He's talking about people that serve in unseen places. He says, what convinced me was a woman named Olive. Olive grew up poor in a rural West Virginia in a shotgun house that rattled every time the train went by. She married young. Her husband died suddenly, leaving her a full house of kids to feed. And uh, Olive, uh, she, uh, you know, didn't have a retirement fund, and so she began to, you know, get a job, began to work. She would walk to work. She suffered from severe arth uh, arthritis. And then uh, she would descend to this nursing home where she worked in the evenings. Uh, she would work in a basement. He says, to the sweltering laundry room. She would wash and dry linens uh, soiled by the residents that were, uh, you know, was a, a, a nursing, nursing home. And so this person is telling the story. He says that she loved kids, so she began to take care of kids also as another side job. She had a gift when she would carry babies that were crying. She was able to put them to sleep, and so he calls it a gift. Um, caterwauling uh, infants. It was a magical thing to see, he says. He said, I would drive Olive home and watch her climb with difficulty to her second floor apartment. Then she'd give me a hug and a big smile and say good night. Many times as I walked down to my car, I would shake my head. I have seen Olive worried about medical bills, about children, but I've never heard Olive complain. I've never seen her be anything but sunny and grateful for her lot in life. He says, then the Holy Spirit would convict me. I have a great working atmosphere and a wonderful health coverage, and yet I'm routinely ungrateful. I was in the presence of someone great, and her very life flushed out what was not good in me. Yes, God hides the good. He seems to delight in taking his treasures and placing them not in a display case in the living room, but in a dark corner of a basement. Man. You know, this is true when it comes to a mother church, when it comes to a conference center, and that is that many times God hides the goods in nursery rooms, in dark media rooms, cleaning ladies uh, that have to stay behind so that God's house can be presentable the next day. And many times those that serve in hidden places, they don't feel like they are making as much impact as those that are in the limelight. But we are going to read about King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and we're going to see how those that serve and those that are in the limelight are actually making the exact same impact. Amen. First Kings chapter 10, verse 1. It says, Now when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great uh, retinue with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. 
So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters, and their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land, which she lived about 1,200 miles away, about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and I saw with my own eyes, and indeed the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceeds the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men. And happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord has loved Israel forever, therefore he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices and great quantity, and precious stones. There never... Again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Also, the ships of Hiram, which brought gold of um, Ophir, brought great quantities of almug wood and precious stones from Ophir. And the king made steps of the almug wood for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, also harps and stringed instruments for singers. There never again came such almug wood, uh, nor, has the, nor has the like been seen to this day. Now King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Amen. Let's look at the journey. You know, she, like I said, she traveled 1,200 miles to see if what she had heard about King Solomon was true. Now, let's remember what day and age this was. This would have been no easy task for the Queen of Sheba. You can only imagine oh, what it must have took to travel 1,200 miles back then. I can only imagine the assaults, the difficulty, the rough terrain um, in order for her to get uh, to her destiny. You know, I thought about our pioneers. Here we are praying for them that they will get here safely. They're traveling from great distances all the way from South Korea this year. We have pioneers uh, that are coming um, to conference to get ministered to. And uh, just like Back then, the Queen of Sheba no doubt would have been attacked by bandits and all kinds of different things. Um, there's all kinds of assaults that happen to our pioneers before they get here. Not just our pioneers, but even here as a mother church. This past week, I was getting numerous phone calls to go and pray for children. Um, not just here, but getting a phone calls from uh, uh, pioneers and missionaries. This past week, uh, Gabriel and uh, Brian, they, they got uh, dengue fever. So dengue fever is, you get it from mosquitoes, usually in tropical areas. And what comes with dengue fever is uh, headaches, of course, fever, rashes, um, and pain throughout your body. And this is what the devil does. Right before a conference, he begins to assault, he begins to attack. And how many know nothing is more dear to our hearts than our kids? If there's a way, amen, the devil understands this. Last year's attacks were different. It wasn't our kids. This year, he's targeting children um, because uh, he understands that this can affect people's travels. It can affect the mood uh, and uh, the atmosphere of a conference. The devil has been doing this for centuries. Now, no doubt the Queen of Sheba knew that it was dangerous to travel all the way to Jerusalem. Why in the world would she have traveled so far, knowing that there was so much risk? 
Well, for one, and I know why our pioneers do it, is because they get refreshed. Our pioneers are coming home to get ministered to. I remember, man, coming back from Bolivia, and we were in the first song service. The past seven months, I was doing song service. And I remember just being at conference, man, and me and my wife just holding hands, and we were in tears, man. It was just, we were getting ministered to just with the song service. It was refreshing. We'd been battling the enemy in the trenches, and this is what our pioneers do year around. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 8, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. That This is the reality of pioneering. I want to show you a video. This video really moved me. It helped me think about something. I'm going to tell you what it helped me think about. Amen. Army Captain Sarah Cudd would not give up during the final moments of the grueling 12-mile foot march to achieve her expert field medical badge at Fort Dix in New Jersey. The last step in earning the badge was to complete the 12-mile trek in three hours while carrying 70 pounds of gear. With 13 minutes to go, the captain fell to her knees in exhaustion. But with her soldiers cheering her on, she rose to her feet and crossed the finish line. <laughs> Captain Cudd serves with Army Public Health Command in Fort Knox, Kentucky. She was only one of the 46 candidates who achieved the badge that day, and the Public Health Command says up to 80% of people fail. We think Captain Sarah Cudd really defines what determination means, and watching this video is truly an inspiration to never give up. Be sure to tune in to Inside Edition. Amen. You know that that's a good picture of a lot of pastor's wives that are coming to conference? They've been out in the trenches all year. And they come home, they come to mama, they come to conference so that we can cheer them on, so that we can encourage them and let them know, listen, you can keep doing this, you can keep going. But we forget that it's a battle out there. We forget that there's pastors wise, that there are pastors out there that are struggling sometimes to cross the finish line. You know why else? To build relationships and to strengthen the, one, to strengthen the ones that... They already have. Look at verse 10. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Listen, if she had not made that trip, she never would have had established that incredible relationship that she established with Solomon. This is what happens in conference. Powerful relationships are established. You know, we have uh, Pastor Juan Gonzalez here in Reynosa. I didn't know this, but the first time that he came to our harvester several years back, he didn't have any money for food after service. He didn't have anywhere to, you know, hang out. He didn't know anybody in McAllen. He wanted to come and experience a McAllen harvester, so him and his family came. He said he told his wife, let's wait until everybody leaves. This was after the morning seminars. Let's wait until everybody leaves uh, and then we'll take off because I don't want anybody asking, you know, you know, where are we going, what are we doing, or that we're walking. And so he says they walked to the McDonald's that was right there next to the, the old church where we were at there. And he says while he was walking over there, they didn't even have money for food. He says, Pastor Luis Alcala pulled over, noticed him, and said, hey, weren't you just at the harvesters? And he says, yeah. And today, him and Pastor Alcala and also our church are very good friends. Because that's what's established at conferences, is relationships. The relationships are strengthened. You know what else traveling does? Traveling breaks the norm. You can get stuck in a rut, man, when you're pioneering. The vision gets smaller 
and it's easy to become mechanical when you're out there. There's, there's something about coming to conference that refreshes you and helps you to go back in courage to your city with a fresh vision. Listen, I've been to many conferences, man, where I can't wait for the conference to finish because I'm so refreshed and so excited that I want to go back home and put everything into practice. Verse 13, so she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. She had a new perspective. She couldn't wait to get back home. Look at verse 6, then she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and I saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. You know, her journey to Solomon's kingdom was worth it after this. She was refreshed. She had new ideas. You know... She, the Bible says that she commented, our text says that she commented on the stairs that went from, God, from Solomon's house to God's house. I thought about that. Think about this with me, if you would. Think about the person that built those stairs. Right? When Solomon was building his house and building God's house, he had to go and look for carpenters. And these weren't just any stairs. Listen, I walk stairs all the time. I don't ever look at any stairs and say, wow, look at how they built these stairs, man. They're so awesome. I don't, I don't really care much for them. But she commented on these stairs. She took the time to say, man, these stairs, from your house to God's house. And I thought about that. Think about the carpenter that made those stairs. Can I ask you a question tonight? Is what? People are what people going to say about your work going to impress them the way the Queen of Sheba was impressed? Are they going to look at your service? Are they going to look at your work, what you do in the kingdom of God? Are they going to be impressed with that and say, wow? Because she was impressed. They're coming. They want to see. They've heard. They want to see. Will they go back? Talking about everything that they saw, will they go back in courage, wanting to do it in their own cities? Let me ask you a question. What will they say? Look at verse 6. Then she said to the king, it was a true report. Verse 7, however, I did not believe the words. Verse 8 says, your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame. And then look at verse 9. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Think about this, man. There was a layer, or layers, I should say, of awesomeness as the Queen of Sheba got to Jerusalem. She's commenting on every step that she took and how she was impressed with everything differently. You can, you can imagine the, the gardens, the rose gardens, um, I mean, just the wood, the stone that Solomon would have had, um, and she's impressed. Then she gets to his house, and she's impressed with the stairs, she's impressed with the servants, she's impressed... In other words, there was layers of awesomeness. I love the experience that I get when I go to the Prescott Conference because it feels like this. There's layers of awesomeness. You get there and you park and you're greeted by people that are happy to see you there. And I'm always greeted by uh, evangelist Chris Hart and now Pete Davis, man. I mean, I'm just getting out of my car. And they're already smiling and welcoming me and, you know, they're thanking me. And, man, thank you for coming. And, man, we're so excited to see you here. I, I haven't even gotten into the church yet. Then you walk in and there's greeters. They have an information station. And they have this couple by the name of Joel and Jeannie Morrison. The moment you walk in, you see them. They've been there for 35 years in that church. And uh, they, they're always smiling. 
I mean a huge smile. I've never seen anybody smile that big. They've been serving in that church for over 30 years. They have a little bowl of mints, and I always go to them. I walk in, and I say, are these mints free? And they're like, yes, and I get the whole bowl. I say, okay, thank you, and I walk away. <laughs> they're like. You walk in, Bob Allen is there. He's always standing right there. Bob Allen was there. Bob and Sharon Allen were there before Pastor Mitchell was there. And Bob is there standing, man. He's always smiling. I mean, the moment you step in the sanctuary, there's this, they're just ready to, to greet you and they're smiling. You go to the nursery. And the nursery workers are excited to see you, even if you're holding three kids. In the middle of conference, my wife said, you know, maybe sometime after church or something, you can give us a tour when they had first opened their building. And she says, I can give you a tour right now. Just happy to help. You know, the only people that don't smile in the Prescott Church are security workers. They're the only ones. Don't bother them. They are serious, man, and they're very scary men. They are like the king's guards at Buckingham Palace. They stand out. They, they, you can tell who the security is there. Can I give you a side note for our own church? Ushers are not security in this church. Security is security. Ushers are ushers. Ushers sit you down, they greet you, they help you. Now, don't mess with some of the ushers because they will become security instantly, but that's not, that's not their job. We have security and we have ushers. And all of our ushers smile here. They actually do, right? Yeah, they all smile, you can tell. My sister-in-law came and visited for the first time and she says, you have security, right? Those guys in the corners are security. And I said, yeah. She says, they look very intimidating. I said, good. Then they're doing their job. That's what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> you know that Prescott does a conference every six months? And they're always smiling. That Layers of awesomeness that I just told you about, you get every six months since I've been going for 25 years. You know, I don't feel that everywhere I go. Some places you get there, you know, I go to about 10 conferences a year. Sometimes you get there and they're like, we're glad you're here. Now sit down. It's like, well, don't move, don't breathe. It's not playing, it's not like that, but... It can feel like that sometimes. I mean, you know, we want people to come and experience layers of awesomeness in our church. Amen. We want them to leave with that same experience that the Queen of Sheba had. You know that her attitude changed once she got to uh, Solomon's kingdom? Look at verse 1. Now, when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. So in other words, she's already coming with an attitude, right? She's like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question this guy. I'm going to find out. She was a queen. She was wealthy. She had influence. The queen of Sheba's initial plan including, included testing Solomon, but it changed once she got there. You know that people come to conference with a lot of mixed emotions? Sometimes people come with attitude. Sometimes they feel like there's favoritism in the church. Sometimes there's rebellion. Sometimes some people feel like quitting. Something happens when they get to conference though. All of a sudden their attitude changes. Because whatever attitude Queen of Sheba had, it changed when she was in the presence of Solomon and his servants. What does that mean? That means that it matters how we serve. It creates a culture where people can get healed. 
Verse 2, and when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. Solomon didn't have an attitude. He answered every question that she had. He says, listen, nothing's too hard. We can help you with anything. And the Bible says that she opened her heart. That's what conferences are designed for. That as they see how we serve, as they see our attitude, that they're going to want to open their hearts. It, you know what it creates is that it creates a happy kingdom. Look at verse 8. Happy are your men and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. This is the first impression everyone should have, beloved, when they walk into God's house. Right? What they should notice is, man, Christians are happy. Happy Christians or happy servants means a healthy church. Did you know that people are attracted to happy places? Can you say Disney World? People like it where they're catered to and they're treated like they want them to be there. Doctor learns caring. Uh, sorry, doctors. <laughs> doctor learns caring makes the difference. Rebecca O'Connor says, when I first saw the horrific images of the Asian tsunami disaster, I was working the night shift at New York Presbyterian Hospital where I am a pediatric, pediatric nurse. I felt compelled to do something. So her and a team of 10, they, they make their way to Sri Lanka. They were only about three miles away from a main clinic and a main hospital. But as they set up, they noticed that everyone was going to them instead of going to the hospitals, the people that needed care. They were going to, to this group of 10 instead of going to the hospitals and to that clinic. And she asked, why are they coming to us? The friend said, because at the hospital, someone asks their name, their age, and the workers do nothing but complain. Then give them a sheet of paper and tells them to go and wait somewhere. You sit them down, ask them what's wrong, and treat them. You listen to them, and you make them feel like you care. So the word is getting around. Again, verse 8, happy are your men, and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Again, I want to ask you, what are they going to say? The disciples that our pioneers are bringing, what are they going to say when they go back home? What kind of a, of a story, what kind of, a, uh, of impact are they going to have when they come here? Are they going to be moved? Are they going to be healed? Are they going to be encouraged? See, when you create this type of environment or that kind of environment, right, what, what ends up happening is you end up influencing the world. Your influence goes beyond your church. Verse 13, now King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. Listen, so she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. She went back. She began to tell everybody what I heard. Not even the half was true. Man, you should have seen what I saw. You should have seen the servants. You know what she left? She left satis uh, satisfied. Kind of like when you eat a great steak. You ever, been, you ever ate a real good steak? And you just kind of lean back. And you get that toothpick and you're like, man. Man, that was good. <laughs> she was satisfied. A few years back, I went and I preached for Pastor Conrad. And Conrad and Luthi, they took us to uh, this place called Mid Medieval Times. If you're ever in Dallas, go to it. Listen, we had such an amazing time. I had never been to anything like that in my life. 
But you get there, and again, the people are just happy to see you there. They sit you down. There's, there's people everywhere ready, uh, you know, to, to work with you and, get, you know, tell you where things are. And then you sit down, and they bring soup. Now, that night, they brought a small bowl, and they bring, like, medieval utensils and bowls, and, you know, they're made out of, like, steel and stuff. And, and so I had never tasted tomato soup in my life. And, you know, when I asked, what is this? They said, tomato soup. And I was like, tomato soup? Have you ever had tomato soup? Oh, my goodness. This stuff was absolutely incredible. To this day, I eat tomato soup. You ever looking for good tomato soup? H-E-B sells good tomato soup. Anyways, the fight started. Horses, knights are coming out. They have these uh, wooden uh, joust. They come out, man, and they're hitting the, you know, the knight in the chest, and the pieces of wood go all the way to the audience, man. I got hit in the head with a piece of wood. I was like, wow, this is, man, this is awesome. I walked out of there so satisfied. I mean, it was such a great event that to this day, I can't wait to go back. Is that a, how people are going to feel when they come to our conference? They're going to say, man, I've never tasted anything like that in my life. Are they going to leave and say, I can't wait for next year's conference? You know, God delights in churches and people when they serve with the right heart. She said, blessed be the Lord your God who delights in you. You know what that means? That means that when God sees that, when he finds a church or he finds a people that serve from their hearts, he's looking for reasons to give them handfuls on purpose. He delights in you. Ruth 2.15, we know that Ruth was serving it says, and when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. Also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. That means that things that shouldn't have been there, opportunities, blessings, are now going to be there because God delights when we serve with the right heart. I was thinking about the midwives in Exodus. You know, when Pharaoh gave the command to the midwives, I want you to kill all the male, bo you know, all the, the boys that are being born to the, to the uh, Israel women. And they refused to. And in Exodus 1.18, it says, So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, why have you done this thing and saved the male children alive? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very mightily and God built them houses. Amen. That God's looking down at the way that you serve. And when you do it with the right heart, God says, I, I take delight in that. Think about the king's reputation here. Verse 7, however, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Have you? ever been in the presence of somebody awesome? Have you ever been in the presence of somebody that just impacts you in such a way that you leave their presence thinking, man, what, what an incredible person. I, I want to be like that person. This is what's happening here. The Queen of Sheba was in Solomon's presence and she said, man, only the half was told to me. You know what I love about this story? Is that the servants made the greatest impact in her life. Their influence, 
win back with the Queen of Sheba 1,200 miles away. You know what the truth is? The truth is that the Queen of Sheba didn't visit Solomon's kingdom. Solomon's kingdom visited the Queen of Sheba. You know, oftentimes we think it's the preacher that makes the most impact. You know that there are online churches that people watch only because of the preacher? The churches have no influence. If you were to remove that preacher, no one would tune in. And then there's churches that people watch because it's a full experience. That is a healthy church. A healthy church has expression all the way around, not just the preacher, but the church has influence. The song service, the servants, the, the different ministries, people hear about that. If it's just the pastor that's having influence, if nobody would take time to watch that church other than because of that pastor, then it's not a healthy church. A healthy church has influence beyond the pastor. Matter of fact, they come hand in hand. They're equal. She was impressed with Solomon, but she was also impressed with the servants. That is a healthy church. She noticed the way that, uh, you know, the church was structured. Listen to what she said, verse 4. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the, the food on his table, listen, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters. In other words, he's, she's noticing, man, the, the order, the structure, everything is incredible. It's like a well-oiled machine. She even noticed the way that they were dressed. Listen, uh, uh, the service of the waiters, their apparel, his cupbearers, uh, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord. Uh, there was no more spirit in her. She noticed the way people were dressed. You know that people look at how you're dressed? If you take pride in getting dressed for God's house. She looked at the way they served. The food that they were eating. She took time to, to mention these things. Listen, what are you going to serve the people that are coming, those that work in nurseries, those that are working in children's church, right? We prepare so that when they come, they can taste, they can be impacted. It's a whole experience. You know what happens when you create that kind of atmosphere, that kind of culture, is it creates generosity. Look at verse 10. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great quantity, and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. She had already come with these, right? She had made the trip, but she didn't decide to give it until after her experience. In other words, no doubt she was thinking, you know what, if I'm not impressed, or if they mistreat me, I'm not going to give this. I'm telling you that there is something about creating a culture of servanthood that encourages people to be liberal and to be generous. When you serve well, you create generosity. People are eager to give. I go to some places, listen, man, and I don't feel like that sometimes. As a matter of fact... Nothing in me wants to give. There's something about them getting off of their cars, man, and they're being greeted, and, and they're coming in, and they're being greeted, and they're being treated nicely in respect. With respect, they're leaving their kids in the nurseries. They come in here, and there's ushers. I mean, everywhere, there's just this atmosphere of servanthood, and then they sit down, and they hear a song service, it sets up the preaching. Could you imagine if we frustrate them the moment they're getting here? <laughs> I 
By the time they sit down here, if every, every layer is frustrating them, by the time they sit down here, not only is the preacher going to have a hard time, You know, Matt and Terry McDonald, they set up the bookstore last year. They're coming back again this year. Every time I see him, we can't wait to go back to McAllen. We're so excited. He's been sending me books and all this. Pastor, do you want me to bring these? Pastor, do you want me? we can't wait to see y'all. We can't wait to go eat Mexican candy. <laughs> we, we introduced them to Delia's tamales. Amen. And so in my office, we call those Mexican candy. You know that they come, they drive all the way from Tucson, roughly about 18 hours, 19 hours to get here, maybe more. You know, they came last year, they set up, they don't charge you one penny. Everything that they make from those books, they give it to world evangelism. Last year, we gave them an offering for coming because he wouldn't take anything. I said, no, that's not how McAllen rolls, man. We're going to give you... A check, and we gave them that check, and my wife says they put it in the offering on Friday night. I'm telling you, it creates an atmosphere of generosity. People leave with a greater level of G, a greater revelation of Jesus also. People should walk away with a greater appreciation of Jesus. Look at verse 9. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Now, this is not, this is a heathen, a sinner. And she comes into the presence of Solomon and into his kingdom and she's so impressed with the way people serve. That she says, blessed be the Lord God of Solomon. We are never more like Jesus than when we are serving with a right heart. Then the queen of Sheba praised Solomon's God. She realized that there must be a great God behind a country that is ruled with such justice and righteousness. She went back to her country saying, there's nobody like Jesus. What will they say? Amen. Let's bow our heads. God hides the goods. They come hand in hand. You might not ever... Be on the conference flyer, and you might feel like, man, I'm not making impact. I'm telling you, the preacher along with the servants come hand in hand. What you are doing behind the scenes, I always marvel at our media team. Countless hours, and nobody even sees just to impact somebody with a video that lasts a minute or two. And yet over and over they do it with a right heart. Having the right culture, the right attitude matters. If you are already frustrated and you can't wait for conference to be over, I would highly suggest that you do not serve. Because it's going to create a spirit. Enjoy it from online or because it goes hand in hand, the servant with the preaching. There's layers of awesomeness. There, there has to be. They, they, they have to come and I know this is not a salvation message. This is a pre-conference sermon. But if you are here this morning, this evening, you'd say, Pastor, I'm not saved. I want to get saved. I want to be part of this great kingdom that you're talking about. I want to surrender my heart to Jesus Christ. 
If that's you, amen, I want you to do one thing for me. You're not saved or you're backslidden. You want prayer to receive Jesus in your heart. I want you to lift your hand just high enough where I can see it. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want to pray. I want to make things right. I want to get my heart right. I want to open my heart the way the Queen of Sheba did. Anyone at all. Glory to God. And I want to speak to the church, the right culture. She opened her heart. This is a, a heathen. This is a sinner. She didn't even believe in Solomon's God. There was something about the culture. There was something about the atmosphere. Something about the way that they served that impressed her in such a way that it caused her to open her heart. That's the spirit. That's the culture that we are contending for. Layers and layers of awesomeness. As people visit our conference, as we're hosting this, as we're serving, God is taking notice and he takes great delight. He wants nothing more than to give you handfuls on purpose. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. These altars are open. Come and find somewhere to pray. Maybe, you know, you're, you've been going through some things and you're kind of frustrated. Say, God, help me. There's pastor's wives that are coming in. Some of them are crawling in just like that soldier. I'm telling you, I talk to them all the time, constantly encouraging them, constantly. And we have pastor's wives that are amazing. They are soldiers. They, they're out there fighting. They're contending. We have pastors that are coming in like that. Will they be healed because of the atmosphere and the culture of this conference? If they are, oh, <laughs> it creates what it creates, I'm telling you, a spirit of generosity. Couples are going to want to go. They're going to want to go and establish what they see here in other nations and in other cities. The culture matters. Let's make up our mind tonight. Let's make up our mind tonight. God, if there is any attitude, anything funky inside of me, God, tonight, help me, heal me. Talk to God and say, God, I'm going to put my problems, my trials aside for this week to minister to these great people that you are bringing. And I know that you're going to take care of me. I know that you're going to take delight in that. I know that you see where I struggle and what I lack, God. And I know you're going to move. I'm going to do that this week. I'm telling you, people are going to come, be healed. They're going to be encouraged. They're going to be generous. Simply because of your service. Oh, she Come on, where can you serve? Oh, she la la lo 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 lo. Oh, kiare la baba sanda. I'm praying that God gives us supernatural energy. Those that are having to work all day and all week, and then you're going to come and serve afterwards. I'm praying that God breathes on you. He's going to move in your family, in your home, in your children, in your finances. Those that have taken the week off to be here, God bless you. God bless you. If I take great delight in that, how much more, God? He's going to take care of your needs. Oh, God, breathe on this great assembly. God, there are marriages here, God, that are barely hanging on. People struggling financially, God. God, they're going to make room for you and what you are going to do this week. Move, God, in their behalf. God, open doors, God. Create things that are not there right now. You are going to open doors. You are going to create things in their lives, God, as they serve and host. Oh, 
Come on, lift your hands. Let's sing that. Lord, I give you. Lord, I give you my heart. And I give you my soul. And I live for you alone. Every moment I'm away. Lord, I give. Lord, I give you my Every moment I'm away. Let's give the Lord a clap off in Amen tonight. Thank you. Thank you, God, for that word of encouragement, God. Amen. I love it. Amen. When there is a prophecy and there is an interpretation. Um, again, our conference is young. This is only our third year. Some of, them, some of you are new here. And so I'm going to ask this next week. We already have some of our pioneers here. Um, let them have the... Uh, time of the pastors. Amen. Put, put all your stuff on hold. I promise you all your craziness will be there after conference. Amen. No, hopefully it won't. No, I'll take that back. But you know what I'm saying. And so let them, you know, let them have the staff. Let them have access. Amen. If you can just give us a, a you know, a week and a half. Amen. Of conference and then it gets back to normal. You guys have us all year long, okay? They have us one week. Let them get ministered to. This is their week, okay? And so afterwards, I'll love to sit with you, fellowship with you, visit you, go pray for your dog and your nana and your tata and everything else. Amen. This week, let's wait. Let's give them complete access, okay? And so that means... Don't rush up here, amen. Let the pastors minister to the pioneers. Okay, I hate saying that kind of stuff, amen, but it's just a week, okay? Hallelujah. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, I'm so grateful to pastor this great assembly, God. I'm honored to be called the pastor of this congregation, such great people. God, I'm asking you, God, that as they continue to serve and put your people first and your kingdom first, that you would continue, God, to impact them and give them favor, God. Let their influence reach the world, God. Thank you for this great people, God. Thank you for everything that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church.